thank, thank you very much. So welcome. And uh, uh, it's, it's not easy to talk about rhetoric not using our mother language because it's, it's about talking words. And so maybe I will not be perfect in English. So I'm sorry for that. But you know, I, I know that the, the language was English. So I, I translate all the presentation in English. So, so the question is, why is it important to talk about rhetoric? Uh, the reason are many is the rhetoric is much more than persuading, is organizing, ar argumenting, connecting dots, as Steve Jobs was saying, was gi giving names to things. Uh, and the, the language is very dangerous. This is a very famous sentence. Not every sentence can be interpreted in many ways. So this is a, a first introduction of, a, of a, an element of rhetoric. This is Václavík, a very famous psychologist. You are perfectly right from your point of view. The problem is, is convincing people. Maybe we are convinced, but they are not able to convince other people. Also in technician, in the technical world is very important. The leaders are very good communicators, always. They can motivate people, they can convince people to, give, to take money, they can manage very difficult situations, negotiating, motivating. So we, we need to learn rhetoric. The problem is that rhetoric was, was forgotten. In many, in, for example, in Italy it's not teach anymore. Nobody will learn rhetoric anymore. That's, that's a, really a pity. And my, my thesis is that rhetoric is becoming more and more important also in the digital world. So this is briefly, couple, so first element is to introduce myself. I was introduced, but this is a typical statement. It's called in Latin, captatio benevolentiae. I have to start, I have to say why I'm here. Why I have to talk to you? Why you have to, to spend time listening to me? I have to explain that. So very briefly, uh, I was working for McKinsey for many years. Then I was part of the first initiative in internet in Italy called Didi Online, 1996. So I was very young, as you can see. Now <laughs> the time goes by. And then I, I found the Tinita, the Tinita operator, the internet operator of Telecom Italia was running. The, and then this was, there was a merge, a very famous merge between Tinita and, 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 uh, and uh, Seat. And then I ran for many years the labs of Telecom Italia. So basically, you have a technical background. But I, I also write a lot. I try to understand why innovation is important, the connection between innovation and humanities, because this is, I think, is the most sexy argument today. We have a lot of technology. We have to translate technology in sense in, in, in business. So you need the art of persuasion. And then, uh, as a last, uh, this is the topic of today, with a, a friend of mine, Flavio Truppier, she's a rhetor. We, we wrote a book for Bocconi called uh, Rhetoric and Business, and we found an association to launch the rhetoric. We are organizing many, many things. So one of the, the most amazing things is a war of words. It's called in Latin disputatio between university and a prison. We organize twice of this, and every time the winner were the, the prisoners, much stronger than the student. It was a beautiful discussion, utranque parte, because people have to ex exchange the position, defend one thing, and so then counteract and was very, it's a way to demonstrate that the rhetoric can be used by everybody. It's not an elite technique, but it's, we have to learn that. So this is, so basically, why is it important rhetoric today? When in, in Italian you say you are rhetoric, is a very bad word. We are not good, we are trying to manipulate in things, we are putting on the ornamental com component of the language. It's not true. So basically, uh, rhetoric is not an elite element. It's not only quality of speaking. It's, it's the art of reasoning. The persuasion is only one component. Sometimes I have to persuade myself. When I have elements and try to make sense of something, I'm persuading myself. I'm not speaking. I'm putting together elements in a persuasive way. So uh, the, the, is, if we see that the, the rhetoric is the art of reasoning, it's very important to manage that and to empower that we need to empower our capability of reasoning. And maybe we can say that is the most important mind technology. In fact, the language, the words, are which is different as from the, from, the, from the animals at the end. And uh, this is a very famous statement by a sophist. Uh, one of the founders, the rhetoric was a sophistic from the, the Sicily, Giorgio Dalentini. He said, the word has a tremendous power, a little word, since for Natini, an uh, invisible body, the word, divine creation come to life. It can instill the joy, eliminate pain, enhance compassion, put an end to fear, only using words. In fact, if, if you think about psychoanalysis, it's very much built on the art of words, which really can really change the behavior and the feeling of people. 
So also rhetoric is important because it's something going against the violence. This is a, is a short, uh, sorry, is in Italian, but you know, as Lucy says, I would like to express myself, but I don't find the words to do it. And so, <laughs> because I don't find the words, I act. And uh, Freud said, uh, the first human being who ha hurled a curse against his adversary instead of rock was the founder of civilization. It's a way to sublimate violence, the words. It can be very aggressive, but it's not acting. And uh, Zedan Todorov, a very famous uh, uh, critic of literature, said, to create a dialogue is also to avoid the two extremes, which are monologue and war. Dialogue means uh, talking, also listening. And a good dialogue is a, is, a, is, a, is a relationship. So these are, I think, uh, and rhetoric can be very powerful. There is a sunny side, and also a dark side. This is Hitler. The power, Hitler was an amazing communicator, amazing communicator. So the problem is, is like a weapon. It can be very dangerous or very important. We have to master that, and then we have to add the ethic to avoid that the, the tool is used on the wrong way. Uh, for example, today there is a lot of discussion about fake news. Trump was one of the most important fake news creators, but you know, it's not in the digital age. This is an example in, of the Nazi, which were creating fake news about the Hebrew. It was a, really the same process. So the, the, the idea to fake is not a part which comes only from the digital. It's really a, an art, which, a bad art, I would say. And what is the way to, to, to be defended by that? No understand the, techni the techniques of the rhetoric. If you understand the mechanism, we are not uh, convinced. We still don't understand. That's the problem. What a wrong argument called fallacia is, a, is, a, is a not correct argument. What, why is it so, so powerful? Because it's, it's like a logical reasoning. Looks like good, looks like, but it's not. It's not completely false. If it's completely false, it's easy to detect. It's not completely correct. It is not completely correct. It's, very, very dangerous. And so we have to master that. And, and, and the debate of fake news today is very actual. This is the economist, no? But politicians have always lied. Does it matter if they leave the food behind entirely? This is a title of the economist. Entirely. Entirely, sorry. So what's fake? Uh, Machiavelli was a very f famous historian, said that sometimes if you want to do something good, if, you can also use very bad techniques. Sometimes people use fake because they think they are, doing, they are doing good things. They have to use very subtle and dangerous techniques. So we have to, be very, we have to pay attention on that because it's so easy to be, to be manipulated. And probably the most important uh, rule of rhetoric is, is this title. It's not what you say, is what people hear. This is the most important question. Usually, when you talk, in a scientific way, you don't bother about who is listening. You talk about the truth. And the truth has to be understood. The rhetoric, I'm not talking about the truth. About, in Italian, it's called verosimilianza, verosimilitude. And so you have to understand who is in front of you. And this is the major problem. I was, I was doing Bekinzi for many, many years. I know how, the, how, is, how is teacher, the teacher, the communication in the business schools. And usually people have the same presentation for everybody. It's not possible to have the same presentations for everybody. We have to adapt the presentation to people, to their thinking, to their value, to their stereotype. It's very, very important. We have to adapt. It's a marketing-driven approach. But usually the business presentation, they think to be scientific because they are presenting ob objective data. They don't, don't care about the audience. It's very dangerous. So maybe I'm doing very good things, but I'm not understood by people. I have, I have to study the audience. Understand what they, what they believe, what they think about me. Then we go into, into detail of that. And then, only to remember very briefly, because the, the, the argument is huge, uh, we have three kinds of thought or speech. Uh, we are very much in, in the business uh, used to, to the deliberative speech. We have to deliberate something. I have to propose something in the future, an action, and I have to demonstrate that this action will be good or bad. And this is one, kind, one type of speech. The second was the most famous, the first one, is defensive. I have to defend myself to say I was not guilty for something which happened in the past. So this is future. And future is not, there is no truth in the future because everything is possible. <laughs> so it's very complicated to convince people to act in the future because there is no truth. Everything is possible. In the past, there is some truth. There are facts. So the, this I have to defend myself to demonstrate 
So the, the, the famous move, Perry Mason, for example, or the lawyer, this is typical, this, this part. The techniques are different because I'm, I'm, I'm working on the past. And then this is the cele celebratory. He's a good guy. I believe in value. The politician very much talk about the, the present. So, and clearly at every kind of speech has his own techniques. But probably the most important law is this one. Every monologue is actual a dialogue. I'm talking now, so it's a monologue. But I'm not alone because I'm comparing myself with you. You have your own speech in mind. I have to compare my speech, which is loud, with your speech, which is <laughs> not loud, but it's, it's present because you compare. And sometimes people think they do monologue and don't, they don't care about the, what people think because they are running the floor. But it's, maybe people don't, don't say nothing, they have no argumentation to counteract, but they are not convinced at all. So it's very important to enter in the, in the trousers, in the pants of the audience, understand what they think. Would they like this? It's, it's, it's feasible, it's, it's reasonable. So remember, this is a very important, we tend to forget this. We tend to forget that everybody has a, a specific point of view and have to confront with their point of view. So we have to study the point of view. We have to understand the point of view. And then, I mean, the rhetoric talks about verosimilitude, not truth. And, and which is not true, can be also important. This is a very famous statement of, uh, of Cicero, Cicerone, which said that the very verosimilitude cannot be demonstrated, but doesn't mean it's neither good or bad. You can use the verosimilitude. It's useful to do things. And the example was this one. When the wise man boards a ship, he surely doesn't know and perceive in his mind that the voyage will be successful. How can he? But if you were now setting out from here, from Puteoli, Pozzuoli, a journey of tiny straits with a honest crew and a good steersman in the present cold weather, it would seem convincing to him that he would get there safely. It's not sure, but it's possible that the, the trip would be fine. We live in, with this kind of reasoning, not with the truth. The truth is very rare in our life. We have, so we have to be good to use not partial truth to convince people, partial facts, hypotheses, possibilities. This is the art of the rhetoric compared to the scientific reasoning or the logic language. And the complexity of rhetoric, this is the word cloud, is, is done by a lot of disciplines. Linguistic, hermeneutic, uh, narratology, storytelling, etymology, uh, dialect is really a, it is, to me, is probably the most important discipline that human beings have because it's the art of language. It's the way we express ourselves, we understand, we persuade, also we read ourselves. So it's, a, it's not only the technique to do a, a, dis, a discourse. A rhetoric today in America is called critical thinking because it's, it's much more used to critical thing, to, to, to make sure that things are good, to, uh, to uh, use the, 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 the art of, of doing doubt, having doubt. But you know, it's a very complex, and NPL, logic, so psychology. Psychology is part of rhetoric. When I use the pathos, I use a, a way of saying, which I'm not talking to the head, I'm talking to the, board, to the heart. It's a psychological approach. I'm not reasoning. I'm using very strong statement. And in fact, these are, for example, three examples to talk about very burning issues. One is talking to the head, it's in Greek was called logos, the logic, okay, fact-based, objective, and I'm persuading with logical arguments and objective facts. It's, it's typical, with intellectual tend to use only that, apparently. Then talking to the herd, the constructive pathos, the pathos, the, the, the feeling I use in a constructive way, persuading through love, mercy, and grace. The ethos is fundamental also, my role, my history, my coherence. So the, part, the constructive part of the ethos is very important because it's important who is saying that. The credibility of the person, not only the words, the credibility of his own life. And that is the terrible part. Talking to the belly is the destructive part of persuading through fear, envy, frustration, caused by injustice, desire of liberation, and this is typical for populism. But this both reasoning have nothing to do with logic, nothing to do with fact. Only they are, they are calling you know, the, the inner part, the, the more primitive part of our body. And they can be very, very strong also. And Chicho said, which are the skills of a perfect orator? A, 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 a rhetoric. 
the debaters acuity, very good to analyze and debating, finding quickly the issues, the counter issues, understanding in a dialectic process. Intensity of philosophy, so a lot of content, a lot of content, not only language, content. The poet's verbal skills, musical, so, so people which are usually known very, very strongly. They are, you know, music, you, you listen to music. And these are an art which is much more to do with the, with the poetry. The Jewish memory, in the past, there was no PowerPoint, no language. The, the, the rhetoric should put everything in memory, everything. Not the, course, not the Italic, no handwriting, no possible. And so the rhetoric was also very good in memory. The voice. Little voice, strong voice, very important to convince people. And then the best actor gesture. Also, the, the body language was very important. So this was a very old recommendation by Chicho, which is very useful today also. And uh, so uh, if we want to go maybe more concrete in a, in a part of, of the uh, persuasion, how to build a good speech, uh, there is a lot of lear to learn by the ancient. So my point is that there is, all, of course, there are a lot of books about communication, a lot. But they are very superficial. The, the rhetoric went very deep <laughs> in understanding the mechanism. So if we have time, we should go to the classics <laughs> because it's, they are much richer compared to the, the modern version, the TED you know, commandments, which are common sense, but not particularly deep. So let, let's go very quickly to some of the ideas. My, my idea today is, is only in, in 45 minutes, 50 minutes, only to start you know, touching elements of the rhetoric, not, not, of course not going to detail. But basically, this can be a good uh, uh, way to structure a speech. Can be a, a speech with the shareholders, can be a pitch, can be a speech to the, to the employees. You have to spend carefully, prepare carefully the speech, spend time before before going to the public, very important. Then, start with a good fit. Is when you start with a bad fit, you, you do a bad start, it's very, very hard to, to recover. So it's very important, the preamble. And then, the structure and then discussion. So let's go a little bit deeper. So example of the preamble, when we have to break the ice. Clearly, uh, the ice breaking, very American, is very useful. You break the ice, you do a, a joke, uh, and you start creating a connection between people. So this, we have many, many ways to do it. But then people usually forgot about the topic, what we are talking about today. And they start criticizing the topic. And maybe people don't remember, what's the topic? Maybe they don't remember. Maybe they read the, the program two weeks ago. So always say, today's topic is this one. We're going to talk about this, ideally in this time. It's very clear in terms of rules. And then why today? This, for example, People, also in the pitch, I, I saw a lot, of, of course, uh, of pitch presentation. For example, they never talk about uh, the, you know, why is important. Why me? Maybe the topic is important, but why me? I'm, I'm incredible. Why today? Is important today, or maybe we are late, or maybe we can wait one year? The time issue is very important. The Greeks, uh, as an, in, the Greek, in the old Greeks, there were two concepts of time, chronos and kairos. The chronos, chronology, is the time the official time, the public time, and the, the kairos, the, the good time, the proper time. Sometimes you have a good idea, if you select the wrong time, the, the, the idea will not have success. So also selecting the good time is very important. Sometimes the idea, for example, in the, in the innovation, also Steve Jobs, which was a, a major innovator, some of the product was too early. Yet clearly the idea, like the Newton, for example, the clear idea, but the market was not ready. So the timing issue is very important. Always re do a question, why today? Because usually when you do a presentation or a pitch, you tend to put urgency on, the, on people who listen, no? because you want money. And the urgency means why now? Or again, are, are we late or we are too in advance? We have, you have to go deeper, you have to explain that. It's not, it's not easy, uh, understandable. And then this is very important, the ethos. Why me? Sometimes people have very good ideas, but the question is, why you? Are you credible? Or maybe there are other people better than you in doing this good idea. We have to connect it again in person. So the ethos, why me, is, is very important. And then, again, I, I will go very, very quickly, because, but I will leave the presentation for, for people who are interested. So now I'm, I'm, I jump very quickly about in, in, the, in the topics. So why I'm reliable about this topic? Why others are not doing, for example, people 
comes with a very good initial innovation, good idea. And the question is, but why the other? I'm not thinking about that. Are you sure it's so good? Maybe there are some reason why the, the other, the big player, are not thinking. They are not everybody stupid. Maybe this is not convenient. Maybe it's particularly complex. So this is a typical question the people who listen to you have, may, you have to keep in mind. Because they, they will have this question in mind. Why, why, why not the IBM did that? All of them, they are stupid, they are big, it's not enough. So this is, is, is very important to think about why we are, we, are, we are talking about a very specific proposal. And then, this is usually why in the situation. Sometimes the idea we are, we are bringing, they're, they are changing things. And sometimes the idea is a good idea, but was also good two years ago. But probably two years ago was not, good, was not feasible. So we have to say, what's happened in the, in the meantime that now my good idea is also feasible? Because this is very important. This is a way to explain why the idea is good. Not because it's good, but because it's good today and not yesterday. What's the, what was the event that's changed? For example, a law, a new rule, young people. You know, now there are young people. You know, a new, for example, a new generation. A new generation can be a, a good idea. Yes, it was a good idea, but there was no users. Now the new generation is very good for my product. And then, the today, the, the, the timing issue. Uh, going back to the, to the preparing, uh, I would say we have to understand the audience, the venture capitalist, the, the manager. The, the, and so we have to study. We have to identify prominent value, cliche, taboos that people have. Because we have to know that. For example, if I talk about, I, I, I have a meeting with very old people, very conservative, and I talk about innovation, ah, they don't like it. If I go to young people, I talk about tradition, they don't like it. This is a little example about the concept, because for old people, tradition is a value. For a young pe person, the, the innovation is a value. So when we, do a pers when we are persuading people, we also use not only fact, but also this. We leverage on their value. We leverage on their stereotype, on their cliche. The populism is a lot working on this. So we have to understand, identify the cliche and the taboo of the audience, and then also use this kind of information to build our presentation. Then the question is, do they know me? What do they know about me? About my credibility in, in, in being the person? We have to do a point of view, maybe give some of Elements which will enforce our role. Otherwise, they don't know us. And so this question is very important. The, the second speech I, I was, and then also the style. Uh, the style is very important. For example, when there is a business presentation, the style is very synthetic, very not colored. Now, if there is a funeral, I have to change completely the style. It cannot be a very quick five sentence in a funeral. I cannot. So again, remember, in the style, you, you apply the style to your presentation. Sometimes the style is also, I'm not going to use English because nobody, English expression or, or technical words because nobody understands that. You have to take out this. This is, again, an analysis of the, of, of the audience. If the audience doesn't know English, take out the English expression. Boy, it's, it's, it's banal, but people forget that. So you, you start using personal elements, words that people don't understand. It's not polite, it's not very good for them. And then it's very famous, what is called captatio benevolentia. When I started, the Latins say, you have to gather the benevolence, the, the, the grace. The people have to be willing to hear. Uh, and this is a very famous captatio benevolence of Steve Jobs. Uh, uh, and in Latin, this kind of captatio benevolence was called propter infirmitatem, which means I'm going to lower myself. I'm, I'm a guru, I'm very known, but my point of view is to be humble. And in fact, there was you know, in, in the famous Stanford, Stanford uh, speech of, of, uh, of Steve Jobs in front of you know, the people which uh, was the, uh, received the degree, he said, I'm honored to be here with you today at your commencement from one of the finest universities in the world. I never got away from college. I never got away from college. So I'm less than you. This is a typical example. In some situations, it can be maybe strange, but it's very powerful, always very powerful to to lower yourself. Uh, clearly, if you are a little young, a young guy in front of strong bankers, that's not the technique, of course. <laughs> it depends on the situation. But usually, to change, to, to ask, how can I 
gather your uh, attention. It's very important because it's a very way to, good way to start. Then uh, uh, here, I don't go through, but you know, the, the incipit, uh, the starting set is very important. The literature, here there is a little collection of some very famous incipit, no? the Iliad, the Odyssey, the, Gop the Gospel of Matthew, uh, the Riosco, some are, are very famous. Uh, the way to start with a sentence chain set the pace of the, of, the, of the speech is very important, the first meeting. So we can gather from literature a lot of suggestions <laughs> to have a good idea to start the speech. Uh, and then the story, the storytelling. This is a beautiful sentence of is an old, old Indian proverb that said, tell me a fact and I will learn. Tell me a truth and I will believe. But tell me a story and we will live with, in my earth forever. That's the power of stories. It's not convincing, it's living true. You, you be part of the story. Uh, for example, uh, that's another very deep uh, uh, reason about story. All means and all tells. And the body, body tells too. The human body is a telling body. So the, we are storytelling machines. We love stories. Uh, for example, in, in, the, in the Yiddish uh, tradition, Hebrew Yiddish tradition, the idea that uh, God invented man so the man could tell story to God, no, because God loves stories, and he needs somebody who was telling stories, the man, so only to, to, to show that. And this is, I, I, I think, I'm sure you know the, the movie, Big Fish, it's a beautiful movie by Tim Burton, was the movie about a person who was creating stories, but were so beautiful stories that at the end, the, the son understood that the problem was not fact-checking, it's true or not true, who cares? They are beautiful stories. So the story has a, has a power of convincing where the coherence of, of the story is more important than the facts which are building the history. That's the power of storytelling. Sorry because I'm going very fast, but you know, uh, some techniques. Uh, we need a version of events that enable us to live with ourselves. Usually with the story, I involve people. People feel to be part of a story. That's the power of convincing through stories because I take the audience, the audience is becoming part of the story. And, uh, and also here, the story needs a certain factual consistency, but since we never have a perfect knowledge of the facts, plausibility is more important than accuracy. Plausibility of stories. And here, uh, there is a very famous way to build stories. It's called the, 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 journey, the, the journey of the hero, which comes from Jung. Is a very, this is used by, you know, by the filmmakers, by the storyteller. And is a, there was a Fogler, this, this, this important you know, author, which take the, the Jung and, the, and the, the anthrop a very famous book, The Hero with Thousand Faces, of a very famous anthropologist, Joseph Campbell and said at the end, all the story can be part of a unique story, the history of the, of the hero. Which, uh, and here is the description, because there is something, a, a major problem happened, the hero is called, he's, he doesn't want to go, but then at the, at the end he's convinced, he prepares himself, think about the Star Wars, then he's strong, he starts fighting, at the end he wins, also dies, but then wins and then come back. And, and bring back the, the serenity in the, in the area. This very simple story is part of the story of the literature. Because if you go deeper, if you read, read the, many of the movies of the famous classics of the literature, these are part of this way of telling a story. And so this is a very strong suggestion. And then another element which helped us to build good speech is called Canon. This is the classic canon, uh, rhetoric canon invented by Cicerone. It's very simple. He said, if, if you want to build a story, you have to start the, with the invenzio. This is Latin. Invenzio in Latin doesn't mean invent, it means find. Look. You have to look for information, look, look for facts, look for ideas. First of all. At, the, at the beginning, you have to look for, suppose that we, when you do a presentation, you have some graphics some data, some results from research, so you start gathering elements. And this is the first element. We have to be sure that good element, useful, correct, and this is the starting point, invention. And then the, the most challenge is the disposition. We have to organize these things in a persuasive way. Then, in locutio, you start adding musicality element, you take out the technical words, you work on the aspect, on the elocutio of the element, then you should remember, but for us we have 
that's enough to have a PowerPoint presentation we don't need to put into memory, and then the, the, there is the performance. So to, to have an example with the disposizio, uh, maybe this one because it's too, this is too complex, uh, we have, you have two major ways to present facts. This is the ascending order presentation. You start with a weaker argument of your list, and you finish with a strong, because the final is very important. This is one technique. The second is the opposite. You start with a strong argument, and then the weaker, you, 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 people are so convinced by the starting that you know, people tend to, to take the other things in a, in a very easy way. And, and uh, what is interesting, these are rhetorical uh, techniques uh, which were used by the army in the Second World. So the German line up the best sol soldiers first in the, to hit the enemy immediately and drastically. So this one, and the, and the US army uh, was lined up the younger soldier first to tire the enemies and then the experienced soldier to give the cup of, 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 the, of the grass, so to close. So these are two elements. And uh, in, uh, in the old Greek invented a third one, which called the Nestor uh, ways. The idea is to put the weaker in the middle, a group strong in the attacker and then a group of strong in the, at, the, at the end and then the weaker in the beginning. This is called the... So, to give you the flavor of also organizing, which is not only making, giving sense to the fact, it's also working on the power of persuasion. And so the, the impact of the single factor compared to the people who are, who are listening. On the axis, I wanted to really jump very quickly on, on issues. Another very interesting thing is, th is this one, which is uh, we have 10,000 different expressions. So the, the body, our expression very, very important. For example, it can be very bad to, to have a, not an harmonization between what I'm saying in my body, in my, you know, like, you know, talking about very sad things and laughing. This is really creating a problem. So we have to be coherent and use the body as a strong weapon to increase what we are saying by, with the words. So the performance, the action is very, is very important. Uh, as, as I was saying, Hitler was very, very strong also in performance. It, if, you, if you see, you're, he's so convinced, he's so completely embedded in the way he was saying that, and this is bad, was a very strong uh, persuader also with the body, also with the body. This is maybe, I, I don't have the, the movie now, but there is a beautiful movie. Uh, this, is a, this woman is a, an expert of ASO, the American Sign Language for the Deaf. Huh? And he's using the, the, this, this language to comment a beautiful song by Eminem, Lose Yourself. It's a very powerful. Uh, if you see the, the capability only using the, you know, the, the, the body without the, the, the voice, the powerful. How, how, how can be powerful the body language? Uh, this is, if you're interested, maybe I can show you an example. Another, only picking some elements of the older rhetoric, very important principle, which is never used today, is called the principle of Theophrasto, which was an, an, an Hellenist rhetor. This is also very simple. So leave always to the listener, leave always to the listener something to complete. Usually we tend to say everything, because the idea that somebody will complete our sentence is like, <laughs> I was not complete. I was missing something. He's a professor. He's judging me. So people tend not to leave pieces. If I leave a piece, somebody will complete. It means that I bought. The, the person completely understood what I was saying, he embedded my discourse, also completing that. So it's, much of a, it's a way to capture attention. But if you are anxious, if you are afraid that you are, not, you are insecure, so the idea that somebody is complete is like maybe like the professor. You know, I, w I didn't study everything. I was missing some, something. You tend not to do that. And, and sometimes you see people are talking, 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 not giving the, the public, the audience, a way to enter, to complete, to, to say, to, to set a point of view. So this is very, very important. And, and this is a way to transform a monologue to a dialogue. Maybe the person cannot sell publicly, maybe they can only think that, but this is, is enough. They, they, they are entering in my discourse, they are entering my speech, and they are completing that. So it's like a trap. Leave, leave something to, to fill. But again, this is not used because apparently I want to control everything. I want to say all the most important things myself, not by the other. And this is, uh, 
an example of uh, another very important principle, the principle of three. The, the good rhetor say only three times, no, they, only three points. Uh, Car Carmine Gallo is a very famous American rhetor, uh, wrote a very nice book about the techniques of presentation of Steve Jobs. And Steve Jobs was using the three a lot, a lot, only three things. And uh, the playwrights, no, I mean, four is too much, two is too less. And uh, if you think about, uh, uh, we have a lot of way to, to, you know, veni, vidi, vici. If you go in the church, the church is a, the priest are very good communicator, no? Father, Son, and, and Holy Spirit. Holy, holy, holy is the Lord. Through him and with him and in him. Kyrie eleison, Christ eleison, why three? Because it's, it's much easy to remember three. So remember, three sentences is very powerful. Very powerful, people remember. So in Greek is called tricolon. Sometimes the, the old rhetoric give us very simple suggestion, very simple, but you know, it's part of the experience of this old rhetor, and this is, I think, is very important. Uh, another element, only to jump to another topic, is negotiation. Negotiation is a part of rhetoric, of course, convincing other people. There is a beautiful book written by two Harvard professor lawyer, uh, the name is Getting to Yes, which talks about negotiation, very famous, and uh, the, the, the thesis is, like, is this one, like it or not, you are a negotiator. Negotiation is a fact of life, also in house, also in, in the apartment, the family, not only in the world. So mastering the art of negotiation is very important. And the, this is a very important statement. There was a book written by Uri, by a lawyer, and by a psychologist called and, and the, the, the question is, uh, uh, the goal can, uh, uh, I mean, clearly we have conflict, we have emotion, but the emotion can be very dangerous because I lose control, I, I uh, uh, use my voice maybe in an aggressive way, but are very important because they are rich. They are telling us a lot about ourselves. So the idea is not to eliminate emotion, to control emotion and to sublimate emotion. So the goal cannot be, it should be eliminate conflict. Conflict is an inevitable and useful part of life. This goes conflict often leads to change and generate inside. The challenge is not to eliminate conflict, but to transform it. A good negotiator is able also to play on the pathos side, not only on the logos side, because emotions are very important. And uh, uh, this program in Harvard is, is, is inventing a methodology very, very strong called Call, uh, um, define this BATNA and this principle is called principle negotiation. So there are suggestions how to negotiate, uh, finding ways to uh, find a point of view clearly because the objective of negotiating is to find a point of view between two conflicting people. First of all, separate people from problem. Sometimes to, we identify the problem with the person. So we, we transform an argumentation to a personal attack. You have to clearly separate that. Focus on interest rather than opposition. I was saying this, and now you said, no, to interest. What's your interest at the end? Because I, I'm, I'm going to work on interest, not on positions. Invent a serious option, insist that negotiation. Again, we don't have to answer, but only to give you an idea that also in the negotiation, which is a big part of the rhetoric, there are a lot of studies, ways to improve our capability to negotiate. And usually the good negotiators are good because they are winning in, in a, having a very weak position. <laughs> Not a lot to that gain. This is the art of negotiation, of course. Uh, for example, some topics. This is a part of the of the uh, of a training session in Harvard. Uh, transforming a manager in a leader. A leader also manage conflict. <laughs> uh, handle people or complicated problems. Dealing with an emotional employee. Trying to manage an angry client. Mm -hmm. Struggling with a hard bargaining boss. Handle complicated conversation. For example, feedback. I have to do, do a bad feedback to, a, to a, a person. It's a very tough job to do a bad, a, 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 a strong feedback. I know a lot of managers, they don't do, they don't do feedback for, for that. They're afraid to say, to, to give bad news to employees. Being able to say no efficiently. We have many ways to say no. Some are good, some are bad. So again, it's a very specific item, it's negotiation. Uh, but again, the art of the language, the, the expression, the understanding, the study of the person can be very powerful to, to be able to improve that. And then, very quickly, uh, there is also a, a, a chapter which is rhetoric and digital. And there is a lot of interaction between rhetoric and digital. 
first of all, the, Clute, the very famous Clutre Manifesto, I'm sure you know, uh, the first uh, thesis was market are conversations. In fact, if you think digital is a language, so we are embedded in a digital world, uh, digital is done by software state, which are language. So it's a language, of course. And uh, what, I, what I did, I did also a couple of articles for Wired, I tried to re reinterpret the, the canone, Cicerone canone in the digital world. For example, in Venzio, all the themes of info sourcing. Are we sure about the sourcing of the net? Do you know what is a hoax of Wikipedia? Wrong statement in the Wikipedia. Mistakes. And there is a collection of mistakes. And some are st lasted f six years in Wikipedia. So wrong information before the, the Wikipedia guys uh, discovered that. Now they are putting also bad words, also they are doing counter information in Wikipedia. So the problem now, I'm sure about the source is correct. So info sourcing is a key element. Invento is info sourcing. And a lot of people are using wrong sources, wrong, source, wrong data. Disposizio, uh, the hypertext, text and image. So the complexity of talking, writing a web, for example, where to put text and image. And then also hyperlinks, which can change the order of the, of the flow, open a very complex situation. So these are some of the, of the, of the articles. If you are interested, I'm, I'm sorry I'm in Italian, but you know, I can tell you all the exercise of uh, translating you know, the, the canon for the digital world. And uh, uh, this I was already talking about this. And then the image. Another element is the image. The image can be very powerful. It's very dangerous to use image only to fill a slide with no, no meaning. So I don't know what to say, so I'm going to put an image. Now, the image can be very powerful. I'll give you an example. This, this, this image was much stronger to explain pollution more than scientific paper. Only one simple sentence, very strong emotionally. Uh, another is this one, also very strong against the smoke. No, to, so sometimes the image can be stronger than words. Uh, this is also very powerful. This is an image of uh, George Bush and the single pixel are photo of soldiers dead in Afghanistan. So the idea to create a picture with people because he ordered to go there and so it's, 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 you understand that this is much more than image. That's a strong message. And so it, the suggestion is to find image which can be very strong. For example, this, animal, this can be also different ways to, this is a very famous uh, cheating images, the anamorphosis. Uh, this is, is a beautiful uh, statue in Bologna, the power of the expression. This I think is, is absolutely powerful in terms of, it's very hard to explain, to describe this by words. Uh, another element is the disturbing. This is, I think, is particularly disturbing. A kiwi <laughs> and a mouse. So we can also use images to create problems. Uh, uh, or, or this is called oxymoron. In, in, uh, uh, the oxymoron is a, is a set of two elements which are cont contradicting, uh, cont uh, one against the other. And this is a converging. This is a diverging because it's two elements which have nothing to do with creator. And this is the most, the most famous Oximo in the art. Uh, this, I, th I think you know, this uh, very famous painting of David uh, about Napoleone. Napoleone ex uh, asked to the David, David, Napoleone was a big communicator, uh, to, did a, a specific request uh, to be um, represented, uh, to appear calm, mounted on a fiery steed. And you see, why is so powerful this image? Because it's very tranquil, it's very quiet. But the, the, the horse is, is very moving. So the, this, you don't realize that because you don't do the analytic analysis of the image. But clearly, the perception is that of a strong man, very calm, also when the situation is very tough. And this is created by images. Some are ambiguous. You know that they, I'm sure no, there are two images. And they are both. These are, these are ambiguous. There are one, this is the young girl, Folie Berger. And this is with the nose, is an old, old, uh, hex, old, uh, old woman. You see that this is the nose, this is the, this the, this the mouth. So they, this, these two images are together. They are, over, they are overlapped. So the image can also send this message of ambiguity that with the word it's much harder to do. So 
for example, this is the, with this image started the business graphics. Uh, this was a, a very old uh, uh, image of the 1854. There was the, the cholera disease in, uh, in London. People start dying. Usually uh, every year, every day, the graphic was temporary graphics. So today, 20 died yesterday. And nothing was useful to understand why. They, they didn't know what was the reason to transmit cholera. The idea was only to transform a timing representation to a geographic representation. Let's see where people dead, died. And at the end, they discovered there was a uh, water, it was a problem of the water. So in this case, a changing representation from time to space uh, give, gave an insight. So this is another use of the image, understanding data, not only representing, understanding data. Oops. But you know, only to, to go, to get, to go very, so, and then the actual, uh, one element, one event which br brought back the, 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 the performance is of course Ted. Ted brought back the role of talking to public, using the body, and, and Ted is a beautiful collection of uh, rhetoric, actual rhetoric. You see different styles. There, also, there is also a beautiful book about talking like Ted, which is a book about rhetoric, which then used Ted as an example. Beautiful. So, uh, uh, and also Ted did uh, commandments you know, to teach people. Clearly, this is, these commandments are taken for, from the rhetoric, but very simple. It's a major simplification of the, of the rhetoric. So, this only to give you flavors of the power, the, the topics, the tools, uh, maybe some, some little question, uh, suggestion how to master, because we have to learn. For example, I, I read a lot. And I, three years ago, I was not involved in rhetoric. Then I, I understood it was important to start reading and studying. And uh, we need to study. So the first element to practice, we have to practice. Speak in public, prepare a presentation, write. The experience is very important. Uh, for example, there are some, some rhetoric elements which are new, very new, starting from the, from the bottom line, which are from the street. This is Eminem. The, the, the rap game, the rap game is a disputatio. It's a game, it's a word game between two persons, like this certam, the old certamen, only with the music and with very aggressive expression. It's, a, it's an exercise, and Eminem is very good in that also, in, in inventing real-time work. This is a typical exercise, a rhetorical exercise, a certamen, it's a disputatio. Then read, read a lot, really. Here, some suggestion. This, for example, is the, is the Gallo, who wrote the book about the techniques of Steve Jobs, wrote this beautiful Talk Like Ted book. It's really a, a book about rhetoric where you go to the single Ted and you see in action what is explained in the book is a beautiful way to learn rhetoric. So there are, some, there, there are a lot, of course. This is my, this is my book, but only for the Italian. I, then I wrote some article, and I think we are closing that, okay. And, uh, uh, and then get familiar with TED. So the TED is really a, a major way, play, not only to, to learn to content, but to, to talk about rhetoric, the way to communicate, the style of communication. So I think that, uh, you know, any questions? <laughs> <laughs>